Uh, all these fucking gnats, they're everywhere. And you'd think they would be kind enough to stay away from the path. But no, <laughs> they are at eye level all the time. Hi. Oh, I love this weather, you know, evening, past sunset, middle of August, uh, I'm wearing a hoodie but it's like comfortable, slightly chilly, and I'm in the mood for a walk. Just been over at my mom's house again for dinner. Hmm. I made a video the other day, or a week ago maybe, which turned out to be a bit of a, a, bit of a failure. And the, vid the video was supposed to highlight the failure. <laughs> but I noticed that my commun the way in which I tried to communicate what failed was also a failure. <laughs> because I wasn't really able to properly communicate exactly what, ha what had happened, what had gone wrong in the video so when I was editing uh, you know my point was to edit and demonstrate how I failed with what I was trying to do in the video but as I was editing I realized that even me trying to explain the failure was a failure <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense but I, I was trying to make a time-lapse video where I was just walking you know in the forest and I wanted to yeah, just do a long time lapse of me walking, but I noticed that the camera was much too shaky. I was trying to hold it steady, but ev evidently I failed. So the final product was product, yeah, was just uh, not very nice to look at at all. Uh, so I need to invest in a steady cam. I'll, I'll call Marty and see see what's up. Yeah, so that video is the first one that I've made so far since I came back into making vlogs that I am actually not going to upload because it's just not very good and quite unclear exactly what what happened. Because, uh, yeah, the, 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 the time lapse, lapse was a failure. Then I was trying to explain something that, something that went wrong post me filming the time lapse, but noticed, like I said in editing, that uh, my communication skills were lacking because what I, what I had experienced was not really communicated by me, I noticed later on. And uh, it, it would have been just kind of confusing for any viewers, I think. It is super quiet, almost um, unnervingly quiet. It's never this quiet <laughs> in this city. Usually there, there's a rumbling of something. It's like 9 p.m. I think, no, 8 p.m., but it doesn't matter. 
Um, I've noticed that my vlogs have taken the trajectory from my apartment outside more and more. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> Yesterday, two days ago, there was a strongman competition. And when there's strongman, I always buy pizza. I buy two pizzas. <laughs> the Joey Special, Joey Tribbiani. His favorite order of pizza is two pizzas. And uh, the guy who delivered them to me, he said, are you Swedish? Uh, he speaks English. I think he might be from India. And I said, yes. And uh, he said, oh, well, he pointed at my name. You don't have any umlauts or any dots over your A's or O's in your name. It's not another, another female, feline friend, two of them. Anyway, so, but I said, yeah, not, not everyone has that. And then he said, oh, okay, well, you ac your accent is good, so that's also why I ask. And I'm like, hey, thanks. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, I noticed he did the thumbs up while he talked. And then like a fool, just listening to social cues like a zombie, I did the same thing. Gave him the thumbs up back. And for some reason that makes me cringe because I never, I, I never give thumbs up literally like that. So like, what, just because somebody did it to me, like a fool, I literally do the same thing. I guess I'm just human after all. I've noticed my pants keep falling down these days. So what I've had to resort to is like a very old man, um, drag them up on top of my belly. <laughs> and the belly is decreasing, but it's still there. So I can still use it to prevent the pants from falling down. But uh, I guess that's the thing, I, I need new clothes. Um, although, I don't know, maybe a tightening job should do it. What's up? You good? Nice evening. <laughs> Is this the same cat as before? I don't think so. <laughs> But I'm having luck with friendly cats lately. Well, bye bye. I think there may be a subreddit, pet the damn cat. And I sometimes wonder, maybe I should pet the damn cat. But I don't really know if the damn cat wants me to, so... I'll give it a go next time. Yeah, so the strongman competition was good. Uh, there's always some slight disappointments or surprises, but usually it runs by pretty much like one would expect. And indeed, the, the winner was Mitchell Hooper from Canada, and the uh, silver trophy went to Hathor Bjornsson, the mountain from Game of Thrones, which most people will recognize him from, I suppose. Hathor or uh, Thor, being from Iceland, where they have a really strong Strong tradition of strength. Uh, strong tradition. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Um, and of CrossFit as well. But it's fascinating that a country with only like three, four hundred thousand inhabitants, they have so many prominent names in uh, various uh, strength sports. Strongman and CrossFit in particular, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but yeah, something in the water or in the culture. Did I vlog a lot outside when I was younger? I want to say I didn't, but I don't really remember. Um, I just have more time to think about things when I'm outside these days, because I take long walks in a manner that I never really did before. Which is why you're getting these clips from outside all the time, because I'm thinking about something and I'm like, well, it's easy enough to bring out the phone and just talk into the, the microphone. Okay, so I just came from here. Um, I talked about getting lost a while ago in the video. That was when I went in here. <laughs> this is like my new favorite path because it's um, somewhere I haven't been before. It's nice to see something different. This path, it looks like a dirt road path. 
off-road path. So I don't know that I'll find anything here. But I have enjoyed exploring the town lately. You know, stuff is right under your nose really and then you should you should maybe know your city better it feels like sometimes because um, you know there's some nice uh, stuff out there you know not necessarily in terms of activities but just in terms of sights and sounds and smells and just general feelings that uh, nature and the outside world can provide which I found more and more lately and I found I just realized that just a moment ago I was um, I just noticed that I I'm chasing something that I usually cha chase in my dreams because when I would dream and I would realize that I was dreaming I was being lucid um, immediately I, st I started to run out of my room because when I gain lucidity in my dreams I'm o I always seem to be at a familiar place which is often my apartment so I run outside to to fear you know to ex explore all these adventures that I know that only a sleeping surrealist state can provide but lately I've tried to maybe apply some of that to real life in some bizarre way just um, you know via mundane low low impact walks uh, I've tried to just explore various moods that have no uh, definite uh, description or explanation but just being outside in the world feels good you know period it doesn't have to be more complicated so this is a dead end and uh, somebody has been killed here before so I'm gonna go back but um, I'm kidding I I noticed that I haven't dreamt as much lately I just realized that because so, I think I've tried to explore something while awake that I haven't before and that that has benefited me but I also know that I'm a person who um, I sort of almost uh, thrive on uh, what am I trying to say I thrive on uh, uh, chasing something but I only I only realize it after the fact sometimes so the, all these ephemeral moments that make up life, they, they, it doesn't matter if they last for a second or a year, because I know that, that even if I realize that I have them before they're gone, it's almost like when I was a child on Christmas Eve, I, I enjoyed uh, the Christmas celebration so much. And I knew that when, when I wake up tomorrow um, on Christmas Day, the, the gifts will all be opened and the food will be gone and then before we know it we're gonna bring down the tree and school starts back up so I've always had this problem of enjoying things while they <laughs> while they are ongoing does any of that make sense be honest I know it doesn't but uh, it's about that chase even if it's up here chasing uh, thoughts via words I almost feel like I have this radio dial. I'm trying to find the right frequency. And sometimes you make a connection and you hear that, you know, the muffled voices, you're, you're like leaning into it, telling everyone to be quiet. I think I found something here. And then sometimes that goes away and then you're like wondering what if. But sometimes you find, um, find a frequency and you thrive on this frequency because now you found something, but it's also, this also becomes painfully obvious when you're missing things when you're not finding something that that can leave you wanting more and you even if it's just going out for a walk to feel good if I feel like a failure afterwards because I feel too tired or I feel um, too depressed or um, even if the walk doesn't feel very good afterwards um, well, I, anyway yeah, so sometimes, you know, you kind of fail with finding things you're looking for. And maybe life shouldn't be a search, a, const a constant search. But for me, it always was. And I could never really get away from that or escape that, that fact. Um, so um, that's why I search for movies all the time 
try and find interesting uh, genres and interesting directors and um, new kinds of cinema because that also is something that explores the world and tries to find connections and frequencies and um, so right so is it is, is it a bummer that um, you realize that a lot of the, the, the a lot of your search ends in failure or is it you know an ecstasy when you find something and should I just abandon this and uh, not think at all and suffer less I don't know um, well so now I know that that direction is a dead end plain and simple I've been watching this uh, YouTuber um, a little bit, Alina, who ca she calls herself. Uh, she's been making videos for a few months about her depression. It might be um, that that's her first name in real life, I don't really know, but she calls herself Alina on YouTube, and I've always recommended these channels on YouTube. And, um, uh, and you know, there's been a lot of people over the years who talk about their mental state and mental illness and how they struggle and so on and I I've certain I've certainly done that I mean that's what I do it's try it's, it's a good tool to just yes, just to purge thoughts but also to try and reach out to people whether it, it helps you or other people or both like that's you know it's all good but she she has described some um, with words but certainly with emotions with just sheer anguish she has um, described something that I haven't quite seen on YouTube and it's quite heartbreaking to see somebody suffer like that it's really tough it's really tough and I don't you know you don't want people to to struggle like that it seems like a terrible thing I'm, I mean I've struggled a lot but I've never felt what she has felt I've never been as upset about things as she has not to that extent you know the struggles that she described. I've only seen a few videos because they are they are a lot, and um, I want to listen to her. But also, I also I find myself really affected by by what she says and what she describes. Um, and um, sometimes she, she feels like she's not even saying anything. But you know, she doesn't necessarily have to use words to communicate. Uh, it's it's coming through, you know, and whatever she's feeling is coming through, even though I can't relate to it. And that's what I was gonna say. You know, I don't know if I've ever been depressed. I mean, I. It's easy to say that I, I've, I'm so depressed about this and that, and I'm I'm feeling so anxious. Anxiousness, I can safely say that I've felt. I've felt anxious. Like I respect these words. I I'd like to respect these terms. Depression means something, and anxiety means something. You're not anxious because you uh, you have to go to work tomorrow. I mean, you might you might be on a surface level, but you know, you're not depressed because uh, you got bad grades. It's something more than that, and maybe that sounds disrespectful. Maybe there are you know levels, but uh, you know, mental illness is real, and I don't know that I've necessarily felt depressed. Um, but again, I know that I thought that I've been quite depressed but I don't know if I actually have but like I said I know I've been anxious um, last year to me just felt like um, like a big big long suffering and I couldn't enjoy anything at least not sober I couldn't and I could not enjoy a thing um, I'm slowly trying to take you know dig myself out of that but I just you know you need to reflect sometimes where you are and where other people are and recognize that you know 
I don't know if we need to grade things in terms of how bad we are doing. But I, I know there are people out there who struggle more than I do. Uh, but to see struggle like to see struggle put so raw on the camera like that to that extent, it's it's for me it's you know I'm a sensitive person. I you know I, anyway I don't I shouldn't make it about me. But it's it's very hard to take it all in. But it's it's you know it's helpful as well um, certainly. Uh, I do know that I've felt a lot of sadness. Um, over the past several years, uh, that's the thing that I struggle with a lot, like just feeling sad and empty inside and um, not sad to the point where I'm just crying all the time, but I just feel a sense of longing to something and I feel like something is simply missing and uh, it's always going to be missing uh, and I don't know, don't know how to fill that hole and that's why I'm taking all these walks now, just trying to search for something and I have no idea what. I mean, I'm, take, I'm taking the walks for very simple reasons, because I want to be healthier and that they make me feel good. But I notice that I'm always looking for something deeper and something more profound. Um, I don't know. But it just uh, you know, made me think, uh, you know, being out just now, there are so many people just walking around casually and being happy and celebrating something. People kind of screaming in the background, cheering together. Maybe they, they, they're playing a game or maybe they're watching a game or maybe just casually living their lives and then you have other people like this woman on YouTube who uh, she's living her life and, and she's helping people with her videos but she's not living her life casually she's living her life suffering it just seems kind of cruel how some people are born into suffering um, and why is that why do some people struggle so much more than others and um, to a certain point, maybe you're better off just living a blissfully uh, a happy life, if there even is such a thing. I've, I think we underestimate people who seem to be just happy and happy-go-lucky. Everyone struggles with something. And it's not fair to judge a person on the surface like that, or they don't even understand. Because maybe they do. Or maybe their struggle is something that you don't understand. Uh, well, anyway... I don't know. I, I, I guess uh, all I can say that I know for absolute certain is that I know what anxiety feels like and I'm, and I, I'm pretty sure I know what it's like to feel a sense of longing. But do I know what it's like to feel depressed, actually depressed? I cannot say that I do. And so I guess I should uh, feel thankful for that. I just hate dragonflies. I always did. <laughs> I, remem I remember as a child I was sitting in the car once and the, the car door was open and to the right of me, I, I, look I look to the right, we were in Italy at the time and a dragonfly just hovers right beside me and I am so afraid that it's gonna go inside of the car. <laughs> so ever since I was a child I have just hated, hated dragonflies because they're so big and fast and unpredictable before you know it they're in your face so I don't know every time a dragonfly flies close to me I just can't help but cover my eyes because I, I, I don't even know it's the weirdest thing I just can't can't look at their path because it freaks me out So straight up here is the, the Frisbee golf course uh, where I used to play a little bit uh, about 20 years ago which sounds kind of crazy to think that it's it seems crazy to think that it's well maybe maybe 18 years since I played there um, but it looks pretty much the same like <laughs> the sounds of the Frisbees going into the the metal net is the exact same everything feels the exact same but quite a lot of time has passed sometimes it just feels like you can slip right back into the exact same place and, and state of mind.
there's a film called uh, Blissful Yours by Apichapong Berasitakul. And while this is very dirty, uh, it almost reminds me of that film, uh, almost like a little oasis. But of course the, uh, the the freeway is close as it is to fucking everything. You know, there's nice. I've already said this uh, in vlog. At this point, my vlogs are just repeating themselves. So I think they are about to come to an end, at least in this form. But yeah, you know, there's nice places here. It's just um, it's quite loud. Uh, in some places although that area really was quite dirty and kind of disgusting but if you don't look at the details <laughs> it's a nice little um, little uh, oasis speaking of oasis I'm sort of sort of curious about that whole reunion even though I never listened to the band and I don't really understand the, that music I've tried listening to a, listening to a few songs it just does very little for me I don't really fully get that kind of music it just seems kind of dry and dull to me um, but I'm sure uh, a lot of people have positive memories you know it's that kind of music that people attach memories to for some reason that kind of 90s Britpop era there's something very compatible with that sound and the nostalgic memories right or you know just personal memories attached to uh, music I don't know why, it's just something about the sound. Anyway, I am... Uh, without revealing too much, I don't... I'm not doing well right now. I'm really quite struggling, I have to say. So this, this is my second walk today. I don't know what else to do with myself. You know, I've been watching a little bit of stuff on my TV and... I've made salmon. It was really, really tasty, but I couldn't really enjoy it because I can't put aside the anxiety. I don't really want to live life like that much longer. So something needs to change. Uh, I just don't know exactly how to go about, you know, making that change happen. By the way, that was really awkward. I just didn't realize there were people in the uh, to the side here playing frisbee golf so I just uh, kind of stopped talking suddenly in the middle of a sentence because it just feels strange to continue when somebody is so close to you and looking at you but I've noticed I don't really care that much these days if somebody sees me filming not really um, but I also don't want it to be weird and awkward so Anyway, I, I've sort of come to the uh, realization that I might never be fully happy again. I don't know. I don't know. Don't even know if I've ever been happy. I have. Actually, I have. But it's been so long. I, I know I was actually experiencing happiness in 2012. That's a long fucking time ago. I can't really remember feeling happy since then. Maybe. Well, well, d during those years when I studied, I, I was pretty happy. But towards the end of that, I had so much angst. And ever since then, I've really, really struggled to find a sense of inner peace. You know, at least uh, sober. And that's, that's not a place I want to be at for much longer. And I don't... I don't, I don't want to make... I don't want to um, accept the idea that I will never feel a sense of peace again. But I'm starting to think that it may never happen. And it's affecting everything. Absolutely everything. And it sucks. So I guess I really do need to go and talk to somebody. But when these problems... Uh, are put on top of each other, you know, in a pile, and you don't deal with them, and then they accumulate, and then it's really hard to attack one problem at a time, because 
they almost feel like one big hole and how do you even attack that big beast I don't know but um, yeah. yeah I guess I haven't felt a lot of angst lately but I've been felt feeling anxiety and nervousness and stress a lot and uh, I don't know, I, I tend to want to separate those words, angst and anxiety. Angst, it's more deeper, you can feel it in your bones. And anxiety is more surface level, kind of dependent on more, um, you know, ephemeral uh, things, like things that are going on in your life at the time, um, or during that moment, things that can change. But angst, that's just something that is in your, in you, deep, deep down. And that to me is just, I don't know, that's my definition anyway. And that, that to me is much more difficult to deal with. But uh, it's still a hell of a lot more fun to, to not have anxiety. I don't know. It, somehow it becomes a part of you, but I, I've never been able to accept it. Maybe I will in the future, I don't really know. Um, it's just not fun to be alive when uh, nothing is pleasant. I, you know, just nothing. Maybe, maybe brief moments. But then uh, you're, you know, snapped back into reality every time after that moment and you realize that, oh, you're right. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. You know, to, to the people who actually watches these vlogs and actually listens to what I'm saying, uh, even if I'm not always making sense, I just want you to know that I'm truly grateful to the point of feeling quite emotional. It's not like I have a big audience, but that doesn't matter. You know, when somebody tells you occasionally that your videos mean something to them that is certainly not something I take for granted it's just so hard to know uh, if, if I'm doing the right thing with these videos uh, if I'm obsessing too much about them or if anyone even cares about my ramblings but um, um, if, you do, if you do care or if you do listen um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just want you to know that it, it really does mean the world to me, because ultimately I'm doing this for as a bit of self therapy. Uh, I'm not doing it to uh, reach out necessarily. I mean, I am, but you know, the the people who watch, it's just sort of what it is. You know, I don't, I don't know who you are, right? Um, so uh, all I know is that I'm doing this for me, essentially. And if, if there are people who are watching and listening that um, get something out of this, on the other end, you know, that is actually just a bonus. But it's a very... A very... Not now, I'm talking. Okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. Anyway, so um, yeah, I'm doing this these for selfish reasons. But well, anyway, I, I'm, I'm terrible with things like this. You know, actually being sincere about but what other what, what other people mean to me. But it's uh, it's true, and my family mean the world to me as well. And I don't really tell them enough because I don't know exactly how to express it. You know, I am. If I have time to think about what I want to say, I can sometimes word my th thoughts and feelings fairly well. Not all, the, not all the time, but sometimes. So, but then that's one thing to to, to dig out my brain and, and present it to you. But then it's another thing completely to respond to a person, respond back, 
uh, with something appropriate about what they're telling you. And that's the thing that I find to be difficult. Um, like I've said before, I think if you met me in real life, I, w I would be quite different to what I am in my videos because I, I might be quieter and I might be more, I might seem like a total moron. But it's just because I, str I struggle with um, returning you know, sentences back to people in a way that makes sense, because I'm so self-critical about myself. And uh, I get um, you know, tongue twisted and uh, tunnel visioned and uh, all kinds of things. <laughs> Even though I'm not a young kid anymore, I still struggle with these things. So if I, if I, if I receive a nice yeah, so I received a very nice letter in the mail a couple of weeks ago and uh, I haven't responded to it because I, I'd like to. If, if you're watching this, I guess, you know, the letter arrived to the right person and I really, uh, it really moved me. But um, I'll, I'll try to re return to you at some point. But I, you know, sitting down like that and responding, especially hand handwritten, in handwritten form. I, I know that I, I struggle with that a bit, so... Well... My way of writing is <laughs> by talking to a camera. That's my letters that I send out into the world, into the ether somewhere. You know, it's really the saddest thing. Even when I sometimes feel like I'm okay, I'm always, I always have to remind myself as some kind of se form of self-sabotage that, wait a minute, <laughs> you're, you're not a person who feels okay. You're not a person who's supposed to feel okay. There's a lot of things wrong in your life. Now, please focus on them instead. Don't, don't you think for a moment that you can sit here in peace and quiet and just feel happy for a moment because even if I do, in the rare occasion, forget that there, there's something wrong. Um, it's like I'm noticing the absence of the anxiety and then I search for it and then I find it. Um, that kind of sucks. But maybe that's why I'm <coughs> taking so many walks. Like my... Um, escape in the past would be into my room all the time. Now it's sort of the opposite. I'm escaping outside because I can't stand just being with my own thoughts and I can't really enjoy anything anyway. So I might as well just distract myself with another walk. Although vlogging outside comes with its share of problems, mainly distractions and in interruptions and uh, noises and wind and traffic. So even if I know what I want to say, a lot of the time it's not really the right place to do it. I have been, must have been talking for 10 minutes now. So maybe this is a good time to wrap up because my battery is running out as well. But this is my, my new favorite place. I just need always to look for new uh, paths new places to go outside. I don't want to have to go the same route every time. I did that <laughs> did that for the longest time. Always went the same to the same place before I realized that, you know, the city is bigger. <laughs> I can go other places. So that's what I've been doing for the past year. And uh, so I'm sort of run sort of running out of new places to go that I don't feel like I just was at. But this is a new new path that I'm Currently enjoying, you know. Come to think, come to think of it, I think I've always been sort of fascinated by angst and existential stuff because I remember seeing, uh, you know, the painting by Edward Munch, *The Scream*, when I was a child, and I was immediately drawn to it without knowing why. And little did I know that I would one day find myself feeling like that man, that creature, absolute sheer, sheer terror in the face of the universe. 
life and death. I mean, I, I know what I just said, but I don't feel a lot of angst right now. It's more anxiety. Uh, that's true, but it's... Uh, the angst is not gone forever. <laughs> Certainly not. Um, I have, I had, I was gonna walk a bit of a further distance now, but I, noticing my foot is really hurting my, the bottom of my left foot. And I asked my, I asked my mom, who's a physiotherapist, the other day, and she said uh, I need new shoes. I think she's right, but I, I don't know. They, they feel fine. They're just uh, worn out, I guess. But it, it also comes and goes. Now it's gone. <laughs> I just had this sharp pain as if I had like a needle in my foot. And I was starting to get concerned that I couldn't walk home wi without being in significant pain. But now it's gone away again. Very strange. <laughs> 